hello it's this is the third time doing three lives in one day i feel like um i don't know i'm just doing the most but anyhow it's christine ruiz for those of you that don't know me for those of you that do hi uh christine ruiz of christinedeco.com and man i wish i could share this out if you guys get on hey Lashanta, if you guys do me a favor share this out because i want to talk about this just got off the phone with one of my sorority sisters one of my line sisters courtney who um is in hey Lashanta, she is in the home decor home flipping um industry and we just had a really good talk she just launched her site um i hope she gets on here because i'll tell her to put it in the link but i wanted to i'm in the kitchen i'm cooking i'm making spaghetti and I'm trying to get this done before my husband gets home. But anyhow, I was talking to her and I wanted to talk about this. I've actually talked about this probably six months ago. Hi, Brittany. But I wanted to talk about, um, we were talking about when you grow up and how society essentially tells you go to school, get your degree. Thank you, Lashanta. Get multiple degrees, um, get a job, do your job, stay at that job, uh, work hard. You know get by and then when you're 65 and now it's probably closer to 70 72 hi bobby then you get to retire and you get to enjoy your life in retirement by then your body is probably not what it was when you were 30 or 40 right so that's what we teach that's where hi bobby that's what we're constantly that's what we're taught that's what's ingrained in us right to just follow the system and it's funny you said retirement it's funny and, and this came up hi Christy or is it Chris Kirsty I hope if I tear up your name I apologize um one thing prompted it my daughter for some of you that know she started going to um a private school it's a Waldorf school and they have sort of a Montessori way of thinking hi Tina I know I'm like should I put my phone up I don't want y'all looking at my, my my kitchen it's a little it's a little all over the place um we live in Queens we got small houses in Queens we got six people that live here so we got to put stuff everywhere hi Regina so getting back to the point my daughter goes to a school it's a Waldorf school it is not your traditional um way of learning it's not your traditional way of raising children at my daughter's school she has things like um classes like uh woodworking she has gardening for a class uh, she has fabric and hand working classes she has your rhythm um, she has you know your regular classes but she's in sixth grade one of the classes they even learn or the session they learn is business math like they're teaching these kids these sixth graders business math but even on top of that my daughter has chores her classroom these kids have chores every day um, they also have free periods where they are able to go to the library, go to the gym, go outside. Um, they're really not just raising kids to pass a test or pass an exam, but to be functioning human beings who are able to contribute to society, um, have a skill and also appreciation for people. Hey Rashad, and one of the things, and you guys hit the like button, the like button will not, I promise you your phone won't blow up or your computer if you hit the like button. Show some love. We have to be in an attitude of gratitude, right? Um, it's okay to cheer other people on and to show love. Checking out your alcohol in this business is required. I have not had a drink in a long time. Okay, I still breastfeed and I don't pump and dump. There's no, I'm not wasting this good milk, let me tell you. I'm not dumping a damn thing. So until Dane is off my tits, there will be no alcohol consumption from Christine, okay? But I, no judgment from moms who pump and dump and drink. I just, I haven't had a drink in years. Dane is too. I wasn't drinking when I was pregnant, so it's been a long time since I had a drink. I, I just see the party alcohol. Those classes sound awesome. Useful things that prepare them for life. For real life yes tina so thank you lashanta i'm so happy we get to work together anyhow all that to say it's like it is people are so scared to break the cycle and i'm going to say one thing from the perspective of being an african-american woman y'all might not know i'm black right i said that home-based industry is the only true equal opportunity and i say that um because when I think about even entrepreneurship, because I have some friends that are like, oh, I'm an entrepreneur and that's great, but I'm still like, you need to diversify your money. You need to find a home-based business that will work for you because there is nothing like diversifying your money and there is nothing 
like having residual income. You know, there are some home-based businesses where you start and every month you're starting from square one, you're starting from zero. You got to climb, you got to sell, you got to call, you got to do all these things to get money rolling in. There are some that are true residual based. I'm in one. If anyone ever wants to know about it, I'm more than happy to tell you, but I'm not going to plug on this video. Um, but I wanted to say that, hold on y'all, let me check these noodles. Hold on. One second. Because I don't want this food to burn. Y'all know something funny? I don't eat meat, but I do cook meat dishes for the carnivores in my family. Those noodles aren't ready. Um, I'm just having salad tonight. I usually have salad for dinner every night. I'm trying to stay fine. <laughs> you should plug. Um, if anyone is interested, and I say Regina, I typically don't plug because I'm in the business of branding me and I believe in attraction marketing. And I truly feel that if a person... If I'm meant to work with a person, they'll they'll ask me, what do you do? We can have a conversation offline. Because I've got a lot of different followers, people do different things. And I don't want to put someone else's stuff down, although this is my video. It's my party, right? But um, getting back to it, I have friends who are entrepreneurs. But when you replace your job for entrepreneurship or even just one home business or one thing, you're putting all your money. You took it from this job and you put it into this pot of your business. Um, but even as an entrepreneur, yes, you can charge your rates, you have more control, but based on someone's prejudices, beliefs, biases, they can pay someone else more than you for the same service because that's their bias and it's their money to do so. But with home-based business, the reason why I feel it is truly, truly equal opportunity is because the compensation plan is the compensation plan across the board. If I'm in the same business as Tina and LaShanta and Bobby, what we get, that commission, is the same for all of us, even. And it's funny because all these employees will say equal opportunity employer. But you still are working on the basis, the bias of the HR person, right? Because I worked in marketing for years. I got my degree in marketing. I only have one degree. I got my bachelor's. I didn't get multiple degrees because I just, one thing about me, I always knew I wanted to make money and live a good life. I was never into, I want to work at this job in corporate America for years and years and years and give them everything. I just never saw that for myself. Um, but just the thing of, with a job, they can say equal opportunity employer. I was an HR person, but guess what? It depends on who's looking at your resume, whether you even get an interview to get in the door. And then all the people aren't getting offered the same salary. There are still biases. Um, people are still able to sort of sometimes negotiate. So you can have two people, same education, same background, but this person might not get paid as much as this person. Um, my day job pays you where you log in from. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Or yeah, you can have the same job, but someone in New York City is going to get paid the more than someone in Louisiana. I know that for a fact. I've worked in HR. We are going to pay you according to the, what is it? Uh, what's the term, you guys? Uh, what's the term when you get paid based on your, the city, the cost of living, cost of living. So it's not about merit. It's even sometimes cost of living adjustments on your salaries and things like that. Two people, same job, same education, same uh, experience, all those things, right? But you're not going to get equal. And that's why I say home-based businesses, the compensation plan is the compensation plan. I don't care if you are got three legs. Um, transgender, bisexual, black, Muslim, man, woman. It is really, hi April, it is really and truly the only industry where it is truly equal opportunity. You are gonna get paid the same, don't matter who's cuter, who's older, who's, who's more experienced. A person with no degree, and I know a ton, personally, of people um, who are making multiple six figures making money same money as surgeons lawyers right and they have uh one lady in particular and she puts it out there she has a ged and nothing not saying ged is bad but to say that she has a ged and she's making more money than lawyers or doctors who have to spend the majority of their time in a hospital and they can't go out and have a drink on certain days because if they're on call sorry this is technically my side i'm not scratching my butt but it is it's, um and these people, you know, with certain careers, you have the clout, you have that ambiance, but 
certain careers, if I got to be on call, I can't celebrate and have a drink because if you call me, then I'm inebriated and I can be a liability to someone or myself, right? Um, lawyers, they got to sit there and literally document every single minute that they spend working. Like, who wants to count like that? I don't. So, and not to say that these are bad professions. I'm not knocking that. I'm not even knocking jobs. I'm just saying I wish we would open up and expand our mind and our thinking a lot more. Um, and, and be mindful for those of us who have kids, what we're teaching our children. I'm always talking to my kids about being a, you know, entrepreneur or different opportunities. I've got, you know, DJ loves to dance. I'm like, DJ, let's get some dance routines together. You might be a choreographer or, you know, want to do a YouTube channel and teach people dances. Um, Ava draws and she writes. I'm like, you can do drawings. We can do a black and white coloring book and sell it on Amazon or Etsy. You can do short stories. But I'm always encouraging their talents because I don't want to have them think you have to just follow this regimen. Because the only people that benefit from this regiment and the system are the, that top 1%. The people who own everything, right? Um, and even if it's not a goal to be in the top 1% or to just be rich, just the quality of life. And that's what I love about running a business or businesses from home is that freedom. I could sit there and go back to my job and have that salary or I could grow my businesses. And what I'm doing now is I don't have to put my son in daycare. I don't have to uh, have aftercare programs and stuff like that for my kids. I can take them to school. I can get them. I can be at home with my son. When he was younger, and a lot of people don't know, he had an issue with his throat, and he also refused to take bottles. So he only breastfed, and to this day, he obviously eats food, and his throat, um, I can't think what it was called, but essentially the, the throat, instead of it being stiff, it would flop. And he would wheeze, and him wheezing was him trying to get that to open back up in his airway. And that was scary. And so the idea of putting him in a daycare, and he's little, and he can't talk for himself. He can't defend himself. I just couldn't do it, and my husband couldn't either. And that was one of our decision makings and why I do what I do. But just to say that unlearning, and I did a, a live about this a few days ago, but the unlearning process of just because that's what we're taught in school and everything and it's all about testing and getting a bunch of degrees to then be in debt and spend most of our money paying back these degrees that we got in debt to earn. Where is the, where is the quality of life? Where is the enjoyment of life? Where is the freedom to spend time with your family? Even if you have a house, so many people are house poor. Where is the freedom to be able to spend time in that house that you are paying a mortgage on? You know, I, I know people who have houses and then they sit there and work all day and all night and then they're an hour commute. So then the time they spend is only on the weekends in their own home. When they're home during the week, they're eating, sleeping, shitting, showering, and they're gone. Yay. Battery in the matrix. Yes. Yes, Tina. Lashanta, I love it. I tell my daughter, open her mind and try new things. I can't read the whole comment, but thank y'all for commenting. Um, thank you for sticking with me because I literally was not planning this. I just got off the phone and I was like, we got to do different, y'all. We have to teach our kids different. We have to do different by example and just allow for people to be whole people. Let's teach our children holistically, not just what you get on this test. Another thing, y'all, my daughter's in sixth grade. They don't get grades. They don't get letter grades until seventh grade when they're preparing to go to high school. You know what they do? They give you a full assessment of your child in every subject, where their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, where opportunities for improvement are. And you're, they are looking at your child, truly, and telling you what potential they see. Then when they get to seventh grade, that's when they start to introduce letter grades, but they still give a full assessment. It's not a ranking of this person versus this person it's looking at each person as an individual they're not focused on a test but focused on your child and it's really when she was little i had her in montessori um so that was my first introduction to sort of this different way of schooling but i honestly wish that it wasn't a private education thing and she earned it she because she was in regular school with her grade she earned that scholarship but I wish that more of us had access. I wish this was our school system. I wish the teachers that care about our children, because so many of them do, had the freedom to truly teach and nurture our children as opposed to just teaching them to a test. 
teaching them to pass an exam and putting all these constraints on the teachers so that they can't do what their God-given talent and gift is and truly to educate and nurture and lead and guide these young people. So I think I talked about a bunch of different things, but really that was what sparked it and just how we can be the best and do the best, but if you're a minority, you might not get the best, no matter how great you are, just because of a skin color. Or if you're, you know, a woman, we already know we're gonna make less than a man. We can be better than, but we're still gonna make less than a man in a traditional job sense. And sometimes even an entrepreneur. That's why they have so many grants for minority business owners, because even still, you might not get that shot. You might not even get it. You put your foot in in the door, a, a chance in the room. What is it? Um, my daughter loves Hamilton. You might not even be able to uh, be in the room where it happens for all my Hamilton fans. So that is one thing. If you've never thought about or considered home-based business before, you might want to reconsider. If you felt like, oh, it's a scam, this, this, and this, that, and all these things that people say because they might do it and it didn't work out for them, everything might not work out. And you got to think of how you're taught in home businesses. There are different ways to approach it, but consider it because it's really and truly the only equal opportunity um, industry. Because uh, the compensation plan is what it is, regardless of who you are, what you look like, where you come from, what you have, what you don't have. So I'm going to log off. Um, these noodles are ready. I got to strain them. Uh, thank you guys for talking, listening, um, interacting with me. Uh, I wish I could have shared it with more people, but I'll probably go back and share this in a few groups that I'm in um, Just because I really hope people get the message and thank you guys. I really appreciate it And if you guys are available, you know, I always go live at 12 p.m. Hi, Aunt, Aunt Vanessa You want to get on here at the last minute? I done said a whole bunch of stuff and my Aunt Vanessa now wants to get on my live You're gonna have to watch the replay Aunt Vanessa. I love you, but you missed this one um Plus, I got to do a training. I got some team members in my home-based business that I'm doing some trainings for because this is a big month. This is a guaranteed minimum check month um, in the business that I'm in. So, in one of the businesses that I'm in. I thought this was public. I'm not public. Are you kidding me? I thought it was public. My bad, Tina. I'm going to make it public. I really thought it was public. Um, he said, hi, Aunt Vanessa. See? They, they saying hi to you, Aunt Vanessa. Um... But yes, yeah, so I actually have to get on a training. I do a training at 6 o'clock, so my evenings be packed. But thank you guys so much. Um, like it, share it, and I'll talk to you tomorrow at 12 for afternoon delight. We're going to talk about something. Bye. <laughs>